Hello, I'm Craig. And I'm Heather. Today at Amalgamingle, we will be talking about what we think are the best upcoming game releases that we are looking forward to. There have been some huge launch failures in recent years, so I'm really hoping the titles we discuss don't end up being terrible, because there's loads of amazing looking games on the horizon. And what I've done there is create the perfect segue, so cue the horizon footage. Ooh, the horizon footage! <laughs> the horizon footage! Woo! <laughs> It has been nearly four years since Horizon Zero Dawn was released, and it feels like I've been waiting for a sequel forever. When Forbidden West was announced last year, I could not contain my excitement. That's why this entry is first. We're too excited! I know, I feel so bad for you and everyone else who's had to wait so long, but as a modern gaming late bloomer, the joy of first playing Zero Dawn in 2019 is still fairly fresh in my mind. So I'm quite lucky I'll be initially deprived. But this trailer has given us so much to talk about, speculate and wonder. So firstly, I want to discuss the new location. Yes, definitely. We see the destroyed ruins of the Golden Gate Bridge, claimed by nature, and I really hope we can climb up to the top. Yeah, I bet there's some kind of collectible or vantage point up there somewhere. We also see Aloy come across a buried sign or plaque in Chinese and a hologram of a Chinese dragon, which makes sense since San Francisco has a well-known Chinatown and makes me think of Big Trouble and Little China. It will definitely be interesting to see the integration of other cultures we're familiar with and to see if they're able to establish new tribes that have cultural inheritance. Yeah, definitely, and it is suggested in Zero Dawn, despite the outcome, that there is another site that retains the history of humanity. We see in the trailer that there is corruption of some kind and, spoiler alert for Zero Dawn, we see Silence and a group of goons. Is Aloy chasing him? Why is he out here? So many questions. I'm really keen to find out what the hell Silence's deal is. Is he good? Is he bad? What motivates him? I hope his mystery is unravelled in Forbidden West. Me too. Also, Zero Dawn is set in Utah, so I am curious to see why she leaves home. We see Aloy riding a broadhead, which is coloured blue, suggesting that controlling machines will return, which means cauldrons, people! Yay, cauldrons! It would be so cool if we could carry over our existing ability to override machines from the first game, and the cauldrons in this are just to learn to override the new machines. And, speaking of new machines, we get to see a turtle-like machine, a warthog or a boar, a pterodactyl-looking bird, and of course, an enormous elephant, or oily font. It does make me wonder what machines might return, like tall necks or thunder jaws. Yes, and whether they will tweak the designs as well. But I for one could do without those annoying long legs. And rock breakers. They seem to hate me and they kick my ass every time. We also see Aloy take a dive, so I'm curious to know if there will be underwater combat on top of underwater exploration. And underwater creatures, oh my god, sharks and whales would be epic and scare me so much, cause whale fit it is a thing. Yes, Heather hates open water in Wales for some reason. They're too big, nothing should be that big. Anyway, I am sure there will be new armour, weapons, crafting skills and hunting trials. Yes, I hope they add in throwable weapons and metal stabby ones since they clearly have the resources for it. That would be good, but the one thing I want to know above all else is when is the release date? Anyone? Anyone? Next up is Far Cry 6, which looks undeniably awesome. Right now, all we have to go on is a gorgeous looking cinematic trailer starring Giancarlo Esposito as a dictator Anton Castillo of the fictional country of Yara. We see him talking to his son Diego, telling him to follow in his footsteps. Yep, in this tension filled trailer, he removes the pin from a grenade he told his son to hold whilst it's still in his son's hand and pressures him to drop it on protesters. Wow, dad of the year right there. It is hard to tell by the wording, but it sounds to me like you might be playing as the son. Yes, and if that's the case, then it will be interesting to see whether or not we'll actually be able to actively influence decisions through dialogue options when it comes to ethical dilemmas, such as what we see in the trailer. That would be brilliant. However, it is possible that the son's clear reluctance and perhaps refusal to blow up the protesters might be how the game will set up estrangement from the family and subsequent vigilanteism to bring them down. Who knows? Well, if it's anything like the last handful of Far Cry games, we will end up with a great villain. Definitely. And a big world to explore with memorable characters. 
Excluding Far Cry Primal, because I found the characters to be very forgettable. Not sure why, but I guess Primal doesn't really count being such a Far Cry from Far Cry. Far Cry? Far Cry, no. Anyway, the sad truth is that Far Cry games are starting to get a little formulaic and predictable, so whether this is going to be more of the same, or if we will see some fresh new ideas, we will have to wait and see, but I am still looking forward to this game release. I agree, the main thing I want to see in this game is a more diverse range of things to do throughout the world, outside liberating camps and freeing captives, etc. However, I feel that this is more of a genre issue than Far Cry's issue. Some innovation is needed here. Even Assassin's Creed can get a bit monotonous, going from bandit camp to bandit camp, but as long as they include other activities to break this up, I say if it's not broke, don't fix it. Fair enough. I can't believe we got through that whole thing without even making a single Breaking Bad joke. I know, but it was touch and go there for a while. We all go. Boom. Craig! Sorry, had to do it. You sense the power that flows through this land. Yet, you do not fully understand it. Now for something a little more cheerful looking. Kina, Bridge of Spirits. Hell yes. The moment I saw this trailer, I knew that this game was right up my street. I'm a sucker for this kind of animation style, rural type fantasy worlds where you can make up their own rules and veer away from the norm. It's in these kind of games where creativity really shines in my opinion. Well, I love the art style from this trailer and this is his actual gameplay, then Kina could be shaping up to be an interesting action platformer from what we see. I disagree. I reckon it will be more like Dragon Quest, kind of guided but semi-open world with light RPG mechanics because we see towns and forests that I really hope are explorable. I do get a very Dragon Quest Zelda Nino Kuni vibe from this one, with a hint of Horizon's Aloy in there too somewhere. Kina seems to have the same spirit and fire in her eyes. Also, those stones that have patterns that glow up blue really reminds me of Spirit of the North and what looks like the main villain really reminds me of Majora's Mask, so I think this game has some clear influences. It also looks like they borrow heavily from Japanese culture, not only based on the music and tone but in the trailer's mise-en-scene. We see Kina meditating, shrines, and there seems to be a theme of having an affinity with nature, similar to Ghost of Tsushima, where animals are respected and petted rather than killed and skinned for resources. And the narration in the trailer is quite reflective, sounding like an elder imparting wisdom and suggesting Kina is destined for some kind of epic quest. Also, we see these adorable creatures. They're so cute! I know, they're so squishy. I want a plushie of one already. I think they are the forest inhabitants, or spirits, that Kina will have to save, and they really remind me of Higgledy's in Nino Kuni Revenant Kingdom. It looks like Kina releases these creatures from stones in the same way there are Higgledy stones, but let's hope releasing them isn't dependent on what resources you have at the time, like in Revenant Kingdom. It does look like they follow Kina around, so it will be interesting to see whether or not they play a more active role in the game. I don't know if they have a name yet, but whatever they are, it looks like they help Kina solve puzzles and fight enemies, maybe even bestow Kina with some of the powers we see. That would be cool, but we do see some interesting abilities. There's the staff that turns into a bow and the ability to conjure some kind of energy force field to stagger enemies, like the Witcher's Ard power. I also like the idea of Kina defeating bosses, resulting in bringing life back to the forest. I mean, I know this isn't exactly an original concept, but I really like it. And I wonder if we get other weapons. It looks like that staff she has does everything. She uses it as a bow, a sword, and to cast magic. This game is definitely in my keep an eye on watch list. I am looking forward to this game a lot. At the time of making this video, I think it was scheduled to be released in March, so let's hope they stick to that date because I'm really eager to start my Kina adventure. Hello, Black Reef. Colt, my predecessor, has been pronounced guilty of treason. He is to be shot on sight and forth in perpetuity. Your assistance is appreciated and mandatory. The real party doesn't start until he's dead.
Athena was one of Heather's special upcoming games, so now it's time for one of mine, Deathloop. Based on the two trailers I've seen, it looks like this game was made for me. Yeah, this is definitely a you game. I've never really been a huge fan of linear, closed first-person shooters like Bioshock or 007 Nightfire, but strangely, I really enjoy watching you play them. And watch me play you will, because this game has an exploitation grindhouse look that Quentin Tarantino himself would approve of, and a fast kinetic combat style that looks like Dishonored on speed. But this does come from the same developers. I really like the idea of a time loop gimmick, and I'm curious to know if this will be a two-play game. And it will have an online os aspect. Well, I don't really have much to add about this game. I really like the look of it and the style, and that power he uses to transport himself looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of Noctis's warping ability in Final Fantasy XV, but, you know, better. We also see from the trailer that it looks like these could be branching paths, so I'm really looking forward to being all stealthy or going in guns blazes. And if it gives you the option to play as the woman. Not a lot to say about this game, really, because I think we get exactly what it shows. But I am so excited for this. The next entry is a game that is shrouded in mystery. Everyone is speculating about Stray. But like Far Cry 6, all we have to go on is a cinematic. But at least Far Cry is a pre-established brand, so we all kind of know what to expect when it comes to actual gameplay. Unless they randomly decided to wipe the slate clean and go back to the drawing board to shake things up. But yes, all we can do is speculate, because the trailer is not much to go on. It doesn't give much away, really. We don't even know what kind of game this will be. Will it be a kind of cat simulator, stealth? platformer, action adventure. To be honest, I'm definitely more of a dog person, so this doesn't really appeal to me that much, but the trailer intrigued me enough where I want to know more about the world itself. I want to know where the humans are and the other animals. We see no dogs, pigeons, or even urban foxes. Why are there robots? Was there a robot apocalypse? Why do they wear clothes if they're robots? I know! It's not as if they can be cold or have a concept of shame. Maybe it's like Doctor Who's Cybermen where human brains have been placed in metal robot bodies and they therefore think and act like they're still human or something. At two points in the trailer we see what looks like homeless beggar robots, so is there a robot class system in this game? Also why is the cat wearing a backpack? What's in the backpack? So many unanswered questions. Magic, both beautiful and powerful binds together our long history. That common bond we share is the legacy of Hogwarts. Now it is time to add you. Okay, so before people start commenting on the video saying Hogwarts Legacy shouldn't be on this list, it's been delayed to 2022. I know, I'm aware it's been delayed. I just didn't want to remove it from the list because after Horizon Forbidden West, this is my second most anticipated game release, despite the delay, so I thought it was worth talking about. I think the world of Harry Potter is dumb, so I wasn't interested in this announcement at all. Um, you literally pay real money to go and see every single Harry Potter movie in the cinema. I fail to see your point. Besides, this game isn't even about Harry Potter, it's merely set in the same wizarding world. If we're seeing actual gameplay footage in the trailer, then it actually does look like it could be a fun game that I might want to play. To be very honest, I've never been a hardcore Harry Potter fangirl myself. I mean, I liked the books as a child, the old PlayStation games. <laughs> and I liked the movie, except the last few where it goes quite dark and miserable, but I don't exactly cosplay as Hermione. Regardless, I'm 100% behind this game. I just think that a modern game set in the Potterverse with RPG mechanics, hopefully semi-open world if not open world, and magic at the forefront of battling would be amazing. I feel like magic in RPGs are sometimes an afterthought, like in Skyrim and The Witcher, so it will be nice to play a game where magic is the foundation of the whole game and be able to see what it's really capable of. This game looks like what the first Harry Potter game on PlayStation 1 wanted to be, but didn't know how. But I remember playing that game so fondly. I remember the thrill of discovering secrets around the castle behind bookcases, traversing the castle grounds and Hagrid's hut, learning spells in the most boring way ever, and flying on the broom through those goddamn hoops which was so hard to do because the broom was so difficult to control. I always wanted a better game set in this world, 
and I really hope that they can recapture that sense of wonder I felt exploring the castle in the old game and are able to expand and improve on it. It would also be awesome if you could choose which house you want your character to be in when you get to Hogwarts and this choice influenced minor story changes and experiences but something tells me that the developers of this game have already been overly ambitious, hence the delay. So it's unlikely they'll give us anything beyond what they've already shown. And what have they shown us? We see in the trailer Hogwarts Castle, obviously, flying, spells, different locations, trolls, dragons, wands and alchemy aka potions is suggested. I'm excited to see what else they will include and I pray there will be no more delays. Are you quite finished? Yes, I'm done. Sorry, I've been hogging the mic really badly. I thought you said you weren't a Potterverse fangirl, but you are definitely gushing over this game. The legacy of Hogwarts. So let us know in the comments if you agree with our list or if there are any upcoming releases that you are looking forward to more than what we have mentioned. If you enjoyed our video then please support our channel by giving this video a like and subscribing for the latest updates. I've been Craig and I've been Heather, this is Amalgam Ingle and thanks for watching.